The questions remain the same in each of these interviews. The power lies in hearing these amazing answers. My name is Tony Reese, and it is with a great privilege and honor I present to you this installment of My Life Lessons Showcasing Senior Adults. Hi there, and welcome to My Life Lessons Showcasing Senior Adults. Today, I have Mary Jane Garbo with me. Welcome. Thank you. So Mary Jane, take a moment and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've, um, as a senior, been at the Highlands since uh, February, so it's a relatively new uh, phase for my life. And I really feel there's maybe been four, you know, growing up in your home, uh, you know, college, marriage, and, you know, having your kids. Then there was a career phase, so I consider this phase four. Shakespeare had seven, I only have four. <laughs> so I'm in the fourth phase, and um, it's an adventure, so I'm rather enjoying it. I did not grow up in Berks County. I have lived in southeastern Pennsylvania for the well, since 1965, but I grew up in uh, western New York, uh, south of Rochester. And um, so I'm not a native to this area which has made it even a better adventure, maybe. Let's put it that way. Well, welcome to this project, and thank you for doing it. So let's go right into it. Mary Jane, how would you define a great life? That's a hard thing to say, especially when you do get into um, expounding on what you think a great life is. Uh, it's maybe not going to be what everybody else thinks it is. And as far as a great life, to me, it's going to be what I've done because I did not have some grand plan that I came up with that oh I need to have this and that accomplishment and this accomplishment so I've looked at um, let's just say I have uh, had a lot of experiences that all of them have been of value and it's that sum total of all of the different experiences and the travels the people I've met uh, the education uh, opportunities I've had Music is a big thing for me, so it's been performances I have seen, performances I have heard, and uh, seen great art. That, um, that to me is what is important to me, so that's what's made it a great life. How has being here at the Highlands um, contributed to that great life? Well, in a way, what it has done in my phase four of my life is that there are a lot of musical and art activity here, much more than I maybe would have envisioned if I had just been asked about Berks County when I was busy working and more oriented toward Philadelphia. Uh, but there are a lot of art opportunities here, music opportunities, and the residents here, there are a tremendous number of them that are just as interested in those uh, areas as I am. So for me, it's been wonderful to meet other people with common interest and uh, experiences, really. And so you get to share yes. all of the collective experiences. You do that, but even more important is an opportunity that you have something that you find interesting, you're talking with someone about it, and they say, oh, well, we like to do that. And then there is someone that you can share it with. Mm. Uh, it's, um, it, it happens it happens almost organically, and that's what's wonderful. But that's what I expected from the Highlands because um, I knew there were resident artists here, and they were professional. There were amateur artists that live here uh, in the art world, but there's also people here who were at one time musicians. Uh, and certainly there's a large number of people here who have been major supporters of the um, the, uh, the uh, Reading Symphony and the Chamber Music Series, the uh, music series at Sterling. These are all things, and the Burke's Opera Company also that's here. So all of these are things that you will find certain pockets of people, so I work at finding them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that is an adventure, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, that's very cool. Huh. Well, let, let me go into number three. Who were your heroes or your role models when you were a child? I don't think I really had any. As I said, I kind of, I grew up and you, you have experiences. I think looking back when I was older and sometimes much older, you would find that there were people that had a tremendous um, influence on you 
which at the time they were important events, but you didn't recognize them as being uh, something that made a difference in your life as much as it did. One would be my mother, and uh, I don't think I really recognized her value until I was really into my 50s and 60s. And it's not that I didn't recognize that she was a good person, but I had to finally come to grips with how much she maintained her own individuality in spite of growing up in a generation where women didn't have that kind of individuality. She was not a career person. She was just, a, uh, she worked, but uh, at a relatively, um, you know, low level position. But the point is that she did maintain her individuality and did do a lot of uh, uh, artistic expression things because she crocheted, she knitted, everything was at an opportunity to express her and this was something that was very true in her family. They ended up, as I looked back in retrospect, very much an influence on me because I admire people that have crafts or art, uh, but even craftsmanship. And as I've traveled and you see people from around the world that the women often are the ones that are doing all of the decorative arts, whether it's the tablecloths that they have, or they've made the bedding that they have, or the quilts here, especially in this area, you know, it's quilting and things like that that have, the designs are different, but it is still this compulsive, and it is compulsive. Some of it's practical, you know, we need a quilt, okay, so we'll make it. But at the same time, I think there's a compulsive need for them to have a mode of self-expression, and they did that, and uh, so I admire it. And maybe the other person was my aunt because she was quite an accomplished pianist. And when she got her grand piano, she did give me her piano. And that's how I was able to start taking piano lessons because then I had a piano. And that was a profound thing that at the time I was thrilled to get it uh, because it meant a lot to me, but I didn't realize how much it would be a part of my whole life for the rest of it too. And I'm not a great pianist, so please, this is not it. It's the it's the journey of trying to become an accomplished pianist <laughs> where you understand a great deal more than you did if you hadn't gone on that journey. And that's the important thing to me. How wonderful for you to be able to express that it may, these people may not have been as influential at the time, but as you reflect on your life now, mm -hmm. how they have become. I think that's a great lesson for all of us. Uh, I think I think so, and I think everybody does it. Maybe other people do it a little sooner than I did. They call us late bloomers. <laughs> I think, you know, you know, whatever. What but, do you think would surprise people the most about you? Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, I'm fairly easy to get to talk to, and I'm fairly open, so I don't, I'm really not one to hide things, so that uh, usually it doesn't take long for them to figure it out. But I think the thing that surprises people the most is that uh, on the one hand, I'm on the music and the art side and, and that kind of thing, and I like doing that, and I like getting together with people and having a good time, but I'm a gadget freak. Really? Oh, well, that's it. I mean, I switched from secondary English teaching to uh, um, information technology and working as a programmer and systems analyst and that. And that was the other side of my brain. So at this point, yes, I like solving problems. I like getting um, things that work. Uh, I get annoyed with things that don't work. So What are I your can... favorite gadgets? Oh, anything that's computerized. I can remember when my kids were uh, small, the first ATM machine in the area was Southeast Bank. I think that's what it was, Southeast Bank. And then there was George in Philadelphia. I'm not sure what it was up here, what the bank was the first one to do it, but they were quite young. Well, we had to go down there and see how it, how it worked. <laughs> I want to know how it worked. And uh, so I'm very open to that. So when I see something, I don't know where I was quite recently in Philadelphia, and we had parked the car, and they had the, you know, parking meter things. But it was a different kind of parking meters where you go and you put in your ticket and it, you put the number of your song. Well, that took up at least five or six minutes to figure <laughs> out how that was and see what it works like. And then when you go to Europe, there's even more differences in how they manage to handle things like parking meters and things like that. 
But yes, to me that whole thing is exciting just to see a variation on a, on a, on a theme in a way. But uh, certainly my Kindle, I'm addicted to, you know, having the e-reader. It's easy to carry with me and I put everything on it. Certainly anything on the computers and I'm on there a lot because I do a lot of research for what I want to buy, how much, <laughs> where is it located, <laughs> how much is a taxi from the airport in Istanbul, you know, so I know ahead of time. That kind of, that's where I'm detailed to the point of whatever. So. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. What do you think your greatest life lesson has been? Oh, uh, I don't know if I have any one lesson, but I think just growing up, uh, going to college, um, uh, meeting different people, uh, I think what you do is you, you have an accumulated, uh, you know, lessons that you have to learn. And one thing that's in a way enabled me to do some of the things that I do and uh, because I was a project manager too, just working on that job. Time management becomes very important and it was a natural fit for me because that's something I'm always doing anyway. How can I, how can you do five things at once and still get them, you know, whatever you can't, but you do this and do this and do this and do this. So, so I, I know how to segment things. So life lessons was time management and recognizing priorities of what needs to be done and not needs to be done right away. And whether it is a problem you can solve and make a contribution to and not just a sympathy session where you're really not making any difference to anybody. So um, that to me has been the thing that enables me to do a lot more is uh, being able to uh, manage the time there. How, how did you, can you give me some examples of how you put that into practice? Because that's an important lesson that not everybody knows how to do. So how did you put that into practice in your life to I don't know, that? and that's why I say I don't think this is where someone did something or, you know, how the, when you're young, your parents will say, no, don't get into cars with strangers, mm -hmm. you know, that's a typical parent worried, you know, if their kids are walking from school or whatever thing. So you remember that. Was that a life lesson? No, not really in, in the sense that, okay, we knew we weren't to do that and we didn't, or at least I didn't. I don't <laughs> know, maybe some people did. But as you get older, this concept of a stranger, it changes. And so you can get to the point where you just isolate yourself from doing anything. And that was not something that, uh, whatever, was not part of my psyche. So, so I met a lot of strangers, especially not necessarily going off in a car with them, but, but at the same time, being open enough to not be afraid to talk with them. And that's something I see here in a way when it comes to the city of Reading. There are a lot of people that don't even want to go downtown. Mm -hmm. Now I find that actually uh, difficult to understand uh, because there's a lot of things there, things in terms of art and um, you know cultural things that are going on and um, you know places to eat and things to do and movie theaters and the Miller Center and uh, you know just a lot of different uh, opportunities to do things but that idea that don't get in car with strangers or don't be in an environment that's different that it has limited what they do and um, I think they're okay with that. I'm not. So I will do what I want to do. <laughs> and that's fantastic. And as far as yeah. your time management, maybe with your <clears throat> journey, as you call it, you've had to prioritize what you can do, what you can't do, right. what feels right, what doesn't feel right. And what is something that I think is going to feed my curiosity too, mm -hmm. which is part of education and part of growing up and part of learning. That's very important to me. So, yes, yeah, so maybe I'm more adventuresome than some other people will be, but at the same time, that's something that I have to make a decision what I want to spend the time on and what I don't, and I do do that. And there's your priority setting. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what does love mean to you? Oh, that's a hard question to answer because, uh, again, this has to do with your age and I'm not young anymore, so I think what I thought of at 20 is not what I'm thinking now. I remember the actress, um, and I'm not going to pull her name up. She's a French actress, and somebody asked her that on the uh, actor studio. 
And she said, oh, when you're young, she says, that's passion, that's not love, you know, and when you're older. So it takes on the realm of not something related to a sexual relationship or anything like that, but more a really a deeper caring and then caring about someone more than maybe you do yourself. And then it gets into the religious concept of love too, which is very different. So um, I, th I see all of those are valid. I love film. Films traverse this area in many different ways, and that's what I love about it. Um, there's uh, a film now at the um, uh, Goggle Works Theater, Loving. Mm. Yeah, now as it turns out, that's the name of the couple, so I mean, that's not it. Going. But in a way, it is a story of love, uh, and, uh, the love and the passion of those that wanted to defend that couple. But then also the relationship that that couple had, too, uh, was, was one of deep caring about each other. So it, it's very moving when you do see that, and that's, that's part of what the arts are to me, too. It's a vicarious experience of things like that. And I have three children, you know, and they're doing their thing. So we have to give them space and everything, and we care, but I can't solve their problems for them. So love means to you that deep, that sense of deep care about whether it's something that you're passionate about, like the arts, or whether it's giving space right. to your children, or or something that you just... It's many different things. Yeah, that's... So it's, it, for me, it, it can't be tied into to one definition or one area, you know, whether it's, you know, human interaction, whether it's educational you know needs whether it's curiosity that needs to be fed um, a sense of adventure or whether it is literally in here especially there are couples where one of the partners is, is quite ill and uh, the care they're giving there um, selflessly yeah. and uh, and uh, happily you know with it so it's that's a complex question <laughs> so how do you want to be remembered Remembered? Yes. Hmm. Well, I, I just want to be remembered that I did the best I can on whatever I tried to do. I do not tend to take myself too seriously. So um, I think the thing is to enjoy what you're doing and pursue those things that interest you. And if you have a passion for something, and there are many people that do, uh, and maybe that's why people who are in the arts, I, I enjoy watching what they do and trying to understand what they do. They have a passion to the point where they are perfectionists and, and pursue something in a way that I can't because I don't have that discipline and I don't have maybe uh, the giftedness that they've got initially to see the picture the way it is. Whether they're photographers or they're filmmakers or they're uh, actors on the stage, directors, writers, whatever, all of them. But they have a view. And for those that really write the great book, or the almost great book, we don't just read great books, but there are always something there that they feel they have this need to put on paper put it on film, put it in something to share it with someone else. And in many cases, it does not get shared, doesn't get bought, no one goes to the concert, and yet they still pursue what they're doing to make sure that that art form in them is uh, true to what they're trying to do. And to me, that's love, too. But for you to be remembered, you want to be remembered to bring that type of thought to life, to enjoy that? Oh, I like getting people together and hopefully, you know, in, you know, interested in that. But I don't really look at that being remembered. I think what they're going to do is if they can just remember that it was a passion that I had to hopefully understand what they're trying to say is mine. That's lovely. That's it. That's lovely. It won't be public. I will not get a prize for this. <laughs> That's okay. That was a lovely way to be remembered. <laughs> thank you so much for being part of the Life Lessons Project, oh, Mary Jane. Thank you. Truly a pleasure. Thank you.